Last week, I got a YouTube comment. If you were a noob and wanted to buy your very first mechanical keyboard, where would you start? It can be a little overwhelming, but if you're looking to give mechanical keyboards a try, you're still on your Apple, you know, not so magic uh, keyboard or your laptop keyboard and you want to upgrade. Yeah, uh, it's actually surprising how much goes into like a purchasing decision for one of these things. I know it's overwhelming. So in this video, I want to give you my top tips for shopping for and choosing your very first mechanical keyboard. So the very first place I would start would actually be choosing a size and a layout. They make different size keyboards. Obviously there's the big one, 100% keyboard, the full size that has the numpad, the 10 key on the side, etc. If you're used to that and you absolutely have to have the numpad, by all means, go with that first. If not, there's a bunch of other really cool options. This would be a TKL, that stands for 10 key less, meaning they got rid of the 10 key numpad. They just chopped it off of the keyboard, but still got the function row and stuff like that. I, this is what I generally use and recommend because I like my arrow keys a lot. I really like that. Speaking of arrow keys, you could also go for like a 75% or an 80%. You'll see them laid out as percentages a lot of the times. Those generally still have the arrow keys up here but you can see it's a much more compact feel to it. Another really popular size would be like a 60% or those, you'll even see like 65, 68%. You'll see some crazy sizes. It basically just chops off the top function row and uh, no arrow keys. And you can actually access these. There's actually some different functionalities. Some people have it where you'll just press the shift once and that'll open up uh, some arrow keys and stuff like that. It, it differs from keyboard, but this is another like really popular size. So that's step number one, choose your size and your layout. Also go to Google and figure out if you need the ISO or ANSI, different layouts for like American keyboard layouts and European, it's like slightly different how those work. You just got the Google based on where you're at in the world and then choose one. Now, the next thing is actually probably one of the more important things. Do you actually want to build a custom keyboard or would you mind buying one pre-built already literally assembled and kind of ready to go out of the box now i'm not going to talk about fully custom start from scratch you order the base and the pcb that's like the motherboard sort of thing switches keycaps stabilizers lube films like there's a million bajillion different things you could do to customize a keyboard i don't recommend you start there i recommend you start with a pre-built board but but my next tip, tip number three, would actually be to buy one that you can customize. Just because you buy a pre-built one doesn't mean you can't change out the way it looks and the way it sounds and the way it feels. You absolutely can. So make sure you're buying a hot swappable board. Got tools right here. Basically what hot swappable means is you can actually swap out the switches, not the keycaps. What you see are the keycaps. What's underneath them are actually what makes a mechanical keyboard, you know, mechanical, the switches. There's one, that is a switch. You want to buy a keyboard that is hot swappable so you can take these things out. They're not permanently attached. You can choose new switches. You can go buy new switches relatively cheaply that sound different and feel different. You don't really know what you like yet and that's okay as a beginner. So grab something. I have some switch recommendations coming up in a second. Do yourself a favor and get one that's hot swappable so you can always switch it out later See what I did right there? You can always swap these out later if you want a different look, feel, and sound. And that's actually really important because you don't know what you like yet. And it goes without saying almost that almost any mechanical keyboard is going to allow you to swap out the keycaps, what you see. What you see, you can choose different colors. There's a million different things all over the internet. Some are really, really expensive, like 150 bucks per keycap set. Others you can pick up for like, 50 bucks on Amazon that look cool and there's neon colors and there's pink and white and I have some palm jellies over here that look absolutely ridiculous. It's kind of like marshmallows or whatever, but I kind of like it. So this tip in general is just to grab one that is pre-built to save yourself a lot of time and effort up front because you don't even know if you're going to get into this hobby and it costs a lot more to go custom. Get one that's hot swappable so you can mod it modify it to sound different and feel different if you ever choose to. You don't have to, it comes pre-built, but you can choose to later if you want to. My next tip in shopping for a mechanical keyboard is to pay close attention to the color of the base, right? You can see black, white, there's also colored things out there. The reason I say pay attention to this now is because you can always swap out the keycaps. That's super easy. You can buy keycaps like we just talked about, but you wanna make sure it looks okay with the 
board base color. This is white. I knew I wanted palm jellies. That's half the reason I bought this keyboard so I could put these keycaps on there. And so I knew I wanted the white version of this keyboard. Same thing with this guy. I also love black keyboards and black keycaps. And this is my Batman layout. Pay attention to the board base. You can swap out the keycaps super easy. It's really easy. It takes 10 minutes, not, or maybe like 20, 30 minutes. But the point is pay attention to the color of the base. All right, the next thing on your buying uh, agenda would be to pay attention to the switch color. It's not only the way they look. You can see I have some black switches in here and some green switches. I got some glorious panda switches. The first question you need to ask yourself is where will I be using my mechanical keyboard? If you're at home alone in your basement, Batman cave office, you can get whatever switch you want because there's no one around to bother. But if you're in an office setting and you're working with alongside other people, or if you're in a coffee shop and you don't want to disturb people, there's a reason that people meme mechanical keyboards for their sound. And that is because some of them are loud and you can purchase different types of switches that are <laughs> slightly softer, slightly more quiet that won't offend your coworkers. Okay. That said, let me give you a really dirty overview of mechanical keyboard switches. This is going to be super short. Linear switches, tactile switches, and clicky switches. Now, when you go to shop for your mechanical keyboards, your pre built you'll probably see blue switches. Blue is a clicky switch. They have a nice little click in there. It can annoy your coworkers. That's clicky. There's also tactile switches. The most common one is browns. You'll see a brown switch. That is a tactile switch. It's actually probably a bad example. There is a, a literal bump in the middle of pressing down a key that you'll feel that lets you know that you've activated the switch. That's the only reason they really call them tactiles because you can kind of feel a little bump like halfway down. For most people on most boards, they tend to be a little bit more clacky, a little bit louder to your coworkers. That's just my opinion. And then there are linear switches, which don't have the little tactile bump. They're smooth all the way back down. And they're generally speaking a little bit quieter. Again, for your coworkers, it's not always like that, but these are, I believe, uh, Gateron Milky Yellow switches, which I actually have a review video about. I'll link it up here. You can go check that out. Red. Red equals linear. Blue switches, clicky. Brown switches, tactile. Right in the middle, red switches, linear. And there's actually a ton of other colors and custom switches that I won't get into, but they all fall under those three broad categories. Clicky, tactile, and linear. If you want to remain more quiet, go with like a linear switch, like a red switch. If you're into gaming and you absolutely have to press things like really, really fast and you want it to be smooth, you might go with a linear switch as well. If you're not a gamer, but you do typing like all day long, you might go with a tactile switch, like a brown. And if you're just nuts like me and like clicky switches, well then go with a blue. Before I actually just give you a few really solid recommendations, there are maybe one or two other things. Wireless versus corded. One of the ones I'm going to recommend is actually this guy right here. There, it's not wireless. There's no Bluetooth or a dongle or anything like that. You have to plug it in via a USB cord and they actually make really fancy, pretty looking coiled USB cords. If you want to spend a little bit of extra money on that, you can, but there are tons of options that can go uh, corded or wireless or with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. I generally prefer wireless just because I don't like to be tied down. And of course, another factor is the backlighting. There are some keyboards that don't have any backlighting, meaning the, the light that comes out of your keys. Others have just white backlight. When you press the keys, maybe they'll light up or they'll just stay lit all the time. And then other keyboards, well, most keyboards these days, probably have RBG, red, blue, green, red, green, blue, red, blue, green. I never can remember. Generally speaking, you can probably just go to YouTube and type in the keyboard you're thinking about getting, and you will actually see videos of people testing out the RBG when it's dark and you can see what it looks like and so forth. If you don't care about any of that, you can always turn it off. You always have settings to change how the RBG looks, to change colors, to change the patterns, or to just turn it off. And the last factor is software. A lot of these keyboards companies will actually give you their own software where you can customize which keys do what. You can even set custom keybinds or macros in some cases. If you care about that, you need to do a little bit of Googling up front. Most people don't care about that right up front. They just want it to work and function correctly. And so probably not really needed to worry about, but I just thought I'd bring it up. All right, let's start with some recommendations. The first I want to throw out, uh, these are all in like the $100 range, by the way. 
anywhere from like 80 to like 120. I feel like that's a good sweet spot. Any less than that, you're gonna get way too much plastic, which makes it feel a little cheaper and sound a little more hollow or whatnot. Uh, and any more than that, you're, you're going up into custom territory and you don't need this video. Keychron. Keychron's, uh, Keychron's the brand name that are available on Amazon and elsewhere. I love the K2. I have four Keychron keyboards, by the way. They're all well-built. They all have like corded and wireless capabilities. They're well-constructed. They sound great. They're portable. They just work. I love it. They also, they work really great for Macs, RBG. Most of them are hot swappable. This one's not. I think you can buy a not hot swappable version as well. I didn't know any better when I bought this one. This is my first keyboard. Blue switches, red switches, brown switches. They got them all. They're available on Amazon for like 90 to $110. They're really great. I love key ground keyboards. You can't go wrong. You can buy different sizes. You can't go wrong. I love the K2. I also love the K7. It's a low profile one. I have videos here comparing some key ground keyboards. I'll link to those. You can go check them out. Uh, also on Amazon, this is actually the one I've been using for the past month is the Royal Kludge. That's the name of the brand. A little funny. RK84. I have a full review video. Again, I'll do that here. I'll link to it here. There's a sound check and a full review or whatever. But I really like it. And I've actually modded this board out completely. Lubed, um, milky yellow switches, palm jellies. I did a foam mod, put foam in here. I really like this keyboard. It was like 80 or 90 bucks. It sounded good out of the out of the box too, don't get me wrong. But the side comes out, it's actually one of my favorite parts. You can make it where this is open or if you like the side on there, you just throw it on. Corded, Bluetooth, it comes with a dongle. It uh, works really well for Mac too. There's like one little button to change where the Windows key is versus the command control situation. RK84, I really love. Super cheap, it is uh, mostly like plasticky or whatnot, but it looks great, sounds great, it works. One more board that I recommend a lot uh, comes from GMMK, Glorious Modular Mechanical Keyboard, I think. They have two main keyboards. They have a GMMK Pro, which is a little bit more expensive and it actually has a rotary knob on it. But this is the original, the OG GMMK board. They make them in a 100% layout with a 10 key. They make the TKL, which is what this is. And I believe they also have a, I think it's probably just a 60% layout. You can go see on the website. You can actually just choose right there. They come pre-built. You can choose your switches. And I love these. I'm really happy with the build. Super sturdy aluminum, I believe. I could be wrong about that. I've always liked the way these looked and sounded and feels. They look super sweet. GMMK. Also two brands I don't have right in front of me would be Ducky and Ann Pro. Ann is in the name, like A-N-N-E Pro. You can find all those on Amazon. They're all really affordable. And the community, I think the mechanical keyboard community in general are very happy with those brands to customize. Ducky and then Ann Pro. I'll leave some links in the description. You can go check them out. And that's it. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, after you grab your first one, then you're looking to go to switches and keycaps. Those are your next two things as a beginner enthusiast, trying different switches and uh, grab some keycaps that suit your liking. They're all over the internet. Just Google mechanical keyboard keycaps. You'll find it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop me a comment. If you have any questions, subscribe to the channel if you like mechanical keyboards. And that's all I got. I hope you have a wonderful day. Adios. Happy clicking and clacking and thawking.